just like we happen to have sort of chained conditionals where we may have multiple uh, types of criteria, we also can work off of compound conditionals. And the entire idea here is now when I look at, say, that if statement, I might want to have one thing be true and something else to be true. Only when both of those conditions are met will this statement be true. Or, as you can see, I can also say something like or. And in this case, I only need one of those statements to be true. Some great examples of this would be something like, let's say uh, I'm at the vending machine. So here's my weird looking vending machine with its buttons little dispenser units, fill that in a little bit. And then the crazy, it's got it always like that, soda. And here's where you put in the money. Okay, well the entire idea, if you think about that vending machine, is I'm going to put in some amount of money. Two dollars, right? And dollars, uh, soda's normally a dollar twenty-five. Okay, well what I need to do is I need to also know that the vending machine is in stock. If it's not in stock, I'm not going to get a soda. So in this case, oh, well, I'd need to do two separate checks. If the soda inventory in the vending machine is greater than zero, in this case, it's 20. Awesome. L or and, and is not just the fact that the vending machine is, you know, more than, uh, zero that doesn't that, that that doesn't give me my soda and subtotal is greater than the cost of the soda again dollar 25 for this if that's the case i can go buy a soda uh and i can even do some more work off of this soda inventory minus equals one and again what that will do is reduce inventory by one. Okay, and so that entire process can just continue to repeat. And so another person could come in and try and buy a soda uh, and so on and so on. And again, we could also reduce or change what subtotal is after that point as well. But again, that's the idea of an and statement. Two statements must be true, must be true true then we also have something like account creation well if we think about this for a second you had to sign up for typos or you have to sign up for almost anything these days what are they going to do they're going to ask for you to type in your username or your email address and then when they ever ask you for a password they're almost always asking you to type it in twice well why is that well, again, it's A, to make sure that you typed it in correctly. That way you don't freak out and do a forgot password request or something like that. But if we were to create your user, again, we would do some checks. We want to make sure that A, your username uh, was not blank. You didn't just do a blank username. And that the words you typed in for your password, or not the words, you shouldn't use words. That's a dictionary. Anyways. The key, the, the characters that you used for your password were the same for both times you typed it in. And if not, uh, you know, we'll give you a little command on the website that says invalid uh, or your passwords didn't match or something like that. So again, it's just another example of two things needing to be true. Then we think about something like the or command. The or command basically states that one of these things has to be true. They don't all have to be true, but one of them does. So let's think about this in the idea of, I wanted to get uh, whether or not you wanted to play again. You, we built a computer game, do you wanna play again? We check whether or not you said yes or no. Well, if you can see, I do a few checks because the user if we think about uh, asking a user to type something, they're not going to type exactly what we want. They may type yes with a capital Y. They may just type a capital Y. They may type yes with uh, all lower cases. They may even go, yeah, because 
I don't control the users. Uh, but all we would then need to do is again, just do a play again, equal, equal, yeah. Now, with that in mind, very important here, you have to make a command separate. Each one of these has to be separate. This is not going to work. Play again equals yes or yes or yes. That does not work. And even just to see this in action. So let's say again, play again equals yes or why? If play again, play again equals yes or yes or yes we'll say let's begin okay now more to my point when i run this code it's going to say let's begin oh that means that i magically uh you know it works right well technically no Let's say, for example, they said no in this situation. They don't want to play again. They've, I don't know, it's a casino and they've lost all their money. No, I don't need to lose any more money. Let's keep playing, right? The issue is specifically that this, this or blank, if we once again think about this as everything with each one of these ors needs to be its own conditional statement. Realistically, what we're saying is if blank, or blank or sorry if blank or if blank or if blank when we do something like if why right that command is true no matter what it will always evaluate this as a true statement and so it does you know it it will just never work in our case. We don't want to play again, but we've always said, you know, this is a true statement. So you have to go in and you have to be explicit with your, or play again. You have to be explicit with each one of your criteria, your compound conditional statements. Uh, else oh, and that's it freaking out because I hit run too soon goodbye so once again checked no I don't want to play again well this was not true and this was not true and this was not true so all of this gets evaluated out as false we skip over it else goodbye and just to change that up now, when we say yes or the why, well, only one of these conditionals needed to be true. This was not true. This was not true, but this was true. So at least one of our commands were, were true. We then go in to say print, let's begin. 